Hey, what's up all you addicts out there? Thanks so much for tuning into another Addicted Fishing tutorial. Today, what we're gonna be talking about is bobber and jig fishing for steelhead. But first off, if you're brand new to the channel, don't forget to head down here and tap that little subscribe button. What we like to do is we like to educate, teach you guys how to get out and fish, but we also do a lot of entertaining stuff where we're just all over the world catching fish. So if you wanna join us on our journey, tap subscribe. Now let's dive right in. We're gonna learn about bobber and jigs for steelhead right now. So I'm not gonna dive too much into the gear because we have a ton of other videos which I'll drop some links in the description below if you guys wanna get more in depth on the actual gear. But I will quickly just run through it. Basically what I have is an Okuma X rod. You want a rod that's in the nine and a half to 10 and a half foot range and even, even longer when you're bobber and jig fishing, especially when you're bank fishing because you need that extra control and that extra length to be able to control the fish and control your float and keep the line off the water. Next, what we have is an Okuma RTX. This is the 3000 size. I like somewhere in the 2500 to 3000 range. Anywhere in that zone is gonna be pretty good for steelhead. It's plenty big enough for these fish that you're gonna be catching. I'm always going with a braided line. This is a 30 pound tough line dominate, but you can go up to 50 pound if you want. The, the heavier the line sometimes is better, because it actually floats better on the water, which we're gonna show you kind of why that makes a big difference when we get out here and teach you how to fish this in a second. So nine and a half to 10 and a half foot rod, 25 to 35 reel series with a 30 to 50 pound braid. And that's kind of what you need to just get started with the basics there. What we do next is because you don't want that braided line in the water, you don't want those fish to be able to detect that line by being able to see it really easy is what we've done is we've taken a double uni knot, but you can use any knot you want here. There's a double uni, there's a blood knot, there's a crazy Alberto. Any of those knots will work, have, will work for you. But what I did was I took a double uni knot and what it was able to do was attach my fluorocarbon to my braid. So now I've got my fluorocarbon leader that's gonna be a lot more invisible to the fish. It's gonna help you catch more fish when you get out here. So make sure that you do this because this is an important step. Next up what we have is your float. So this is my fixed float setup from Mustad. Again, we've talked about this a lot. It's our float that we are kind of in the process of launching. It's right in that zone where it's gonna be coming out really soon. But any fixed float's gonna work for you. And basically what fixed means is you have the float fixed on the line and you can easily adjust it because it's, it's run by two pieces of surgical tubing. But basically what it is, is it's fixed. It's not sliding up and down like a sliding float would be. It's actually fixed to the floor. And last but not least, you just need your jig. Your jig or your worm or whatever, but today we're diving deep into jigs. So I'm gonna cut this tag end off here. Throw that in my pocket. I'm gonna reach down here and I'm gonna grab one of these jigs. This is our single beaded addicted sink it series jigs from Mustad. You can get these at tons of local retailers, fishermen's, Bob's, Sportsman's Warehouse. A lot of the retailers up in Canada are now stocking them all the way down into Northern California. So if you're looking for our Sink It Series jigs, you can find them in a lot of places and they'll help you catch a lot more fish. The, the benefits to these jigs is the material we use is kind of a proprietary material. It's kind of like a fly dubbing, similar to that, like a fly material basically. And what it does when it hits the water is it holds its body better than any material I've ever seen. When it hits the water, it doesn't suck in like, like marabou does, or even rabbit fur has a tendency to kind of lose its body. Rabbit fur is now better than marabou, but then what we've done is we've taken it to the next step and find some even better material that holds an even better body. The other benefits to it is the stuff dries out really well, so you never see your jigs really getting ruined. Typically like on a rabbit fur jig, or a marabou jig, the more fish you catch, or the more times you put bait on it and take bait off, or just kind of messing with the material, it starts to pull off and get ruined. And what we've really liked about these jigs is they're just super durable. You can use them long periods of time, catch multiple fish on them, and have bait on them, and they're not getting ruined. And that's not just some sort of sales ploy, even though it is, because I want you guys to go buy the jigs, but try them. Just go out and try them and put them to the test so you guys can see for yourselves the benefits of this material that we're using. It's pretty bad it. All righty. That's the last time I'm gonna sell you here. But now we're gonna take this jig here. We're gonna tie it on. 
I'm just gonna use my standard fisherman's knot here. Seven to eight wraps around there and back through is plenty good enough. Never had a steelhead break on it. Always wet your knots, especially with fluorocarbon. You always wanna make sure that you get the knot nice and wet because fluorocarbon has a tendency to burn onto itself and you definitely don't want that to happen because then you'll hook into a big fish and you'll lose it. Then we're gonna cut that tag end off again. Let it fall right into my hand here. Throw that in my pocket. Put my Gerber, Gerber pliers away here and then we'll run back through it really, really quick just so you guys can see what we've got basically on this. If I can get untangled here, I'm all tangled up in the in the weeds on the ground here. All right. So this is why I love bobber and jig fishing so much, especially with a fixed float setup. It's so simple. It's such a simple setup. You have your braided line to some fluorocarbon, to a float, to a jig, and that's it. There's nothing else to it. It's really, really easy to execute, and it's really, really easy for guys that are out there trying to learn how to catch their first steelhead to get on them. The other cool things about float fishing, especially with a fixed float, you can cover water quickly and effectively. You can basically up and down drag this float and adjust on a quick basis and fish all water columns and fish it quick. I mean, steelhead are pretty bitey in most scenarios, so if you present your jig correctly, it's in the right depth and it's going in front of their face, chances are they're gonna eat it. All right, guys, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you out here on the river right here and we're gonna show you kind of how to fish these. Just some basics, we're gonna run you through just what you should be looking for, controlling your line, controlling your float, Let's do it. All right, so one important thing I always like to do is I always like to find a good position. So I'll either try to find a big rock to stand on or get highly elevated because it's going to help with the line control of the float, especially with a fixed float scenario. And then we're just going to go to work. We're going to start hunting. So the first thing you want to do is I always will start out pretty shallow. I'm never going to send my first cast through there dragging it. I never want that jig to be like dragging down the river on my first cast. So I'm gonna start fairly shallow and then I'm gonna keep working my depth up as I can. All right, so on my first cast, Addicts, when you when you roll up to a hole and you're gonna approach it, your first cast, make it in, make it in close. You never know when that fish might just be sitting right out here in front of you. It's not necessarily gonna be out in the gut. So I always like to cast up river just a little bit. And instantly what I'm doing, you can see I'm bringing that rod up. Keep that line off of the water. You wanna keep that line off the water. You can see your float floating really nicely. And as that float starts to get below you, you're gonna make your first mend. Pick that braided line up and set it back down on the water. I'm gonna go into that rock right there, so I'm gonna to have to adjust. But as you guys can see, let me just do that again real quick. I think I just saw a fish roll out there, Sean. I just saw a fish roll out there, Addicts. Maybe we'll actually catch one on a tutorial. Uh, so let me run that through it one more time here, Attic. So we're gonna cast up river just a little bit and instantly bring that rod up in the air, keep the line off the water. Reel up any extra slack that you need and kind of let that float float down river. And as that float starts to get below you, make your first mend. And what a mend is, is you take your braided line, pull it back and put it back on the water. So now I'm gonna do it without explaining it just so you can see. And Sean, make sure you film me as I get the rod up in the air so they can kind of see what I'm doing there. Casting a little up river, instantly putting my rod in the air. Instantly putting it in the air. And then as it starts to get below me, I'm gonna reel that slack up and I'm just gonna pick that line up and set it back down on the water. I'm gonna pick that line up, set it back down on the water. And then as that float gets below you, you can start letting some line out. Start sending that jig down into the tail out of that hole. And hope and pray that you get a bobber down. And then one thing you don't want to do is I typically won't send it down there too far. I don't like to long line it extreme distances because I've learned over the years that it seems like when you do that, well, guess what? That's when the fish decides to bite and then you're trying to pick up a ton of line and you just don't get the good hook sets. So now that I've run one through there shallow and haven't run it very deep, the next step that you're going to do is you're going to take your float, you're going to adjust, you're going to go deeper. You're going to keep adjusting and going deeper and deeper and deeper until you see your jig dragging the bottom and then you're gonna adjust that back up to six to 12 inches from the bottom. That's kind of where you wanna live, is that six to 12 inch range, so it's right in that steelhead's vision. So again, we're gonna, this is gonna be a little bit farther float, so you guys can 
really see the mending here. So I'm gonna cast all the way to the other side of the river over here and show this boil right here, Sean. So Addicts, as you can see, you see that boil right there? That's not where you wanna live. You do not want your jig to go or your float to go into that boil because what's gonna happen is your braided line's gonna get sucked into that boil. It's gonna be very, very hard to control it. So I'm actually gonna cast a little bit downriver and over the top of the boil and try to hold my line off of it so it doesn't get affected. Instantly, you can see instantly, Addicts, you bring your rod in the air, keep the line off the water. And then as that float starts to move down through, you're gonna reel up your slack, you're gonna give it that first mend, and now you're fishing. And then again, as more line starts to get pulled, just pick that line up, give it a mend. And there you have it, Addicts. So as you can see, as I did a whole kind of perfect float right there, you can see you're gonna to wanna to keep mending. You're gonna mend that a few times as it's going through the thing. You always wanna just make sure that your line's kinda of living behind your float and not getting too far out in front of it. Now let's do like a really farther, like say, say you see like a creek or something dropping in, like this one over here on the other side of the bank. So say you see something like that, but you're just not in a position to get up river to fish it effectively, but you still wanna fish it. You can do it with these bobber and jigs. You just gotta, it. it takes extreme line control and just controlling your float. So what you want to do is you're going to cast way up in there. Put that jig in. And the key is hold your line off the water and reel up extra slack. And you can see that float's still going through there pretty nicely. You see, Addicts, it's all about line control. And that's why braid is so important because you want something that's going to float. So that way you can control that line and not get sucked under the water. Really, really important. Right there, right there. That's where she lives. That's where Big Betty lives. Dang, dang. Let's run another one in close, just in case. You never know, there could be one here. So that's the other thing I wanna talk about, Addicts. When you're jig fishing, it's, it's important that you kinda of thoroughly cover each lane. You gotta remember, your, floats, your jig is floating directly downriver in a straight line. So if you're over, if potentially if you're over five feet and that steel decides he doesn't want to move over and grab that jig, you wouldn't have caught him. So you want to make sure that you cover each lane with your jig. And that's why I say just kind of start in close and work your way over to the other side. So I'm going to run one right down the gut off, off this boulder right here. Oh, look at that, just going through there so perfectly. Give me one. Give me one, Sean. No love, no love. All right, Addicts, we moved down river. I'm gonna try to send a couple bobbers out here and just hopefully hook one so you guys can see. As you guys can see, I'm in this boil right here. It's, it's pretty boily on that inside. And you can fish stuff like that, but it's just really important that you're constantly controlling your line. Just continuing to see that. See how I just mended that? Could you see that good, Sean? It's really hard, but it's really hard for you guys to see that. But basically, you can see the braid kind of laying on the water as I let it out. You just want to keep constantly picking that braid up and putting it behind your float. The idea of these jigs and these floats floating down the river is you want it to present the most natural presentation possible. So the, the less you're moving your jig, and the better it's floating down the river with the current looking natural, the better chance you have a hook in the fish. All right, Addicts, we ran this tail out with the jig, no love, but you know I ain't gonna leave these holes without at least sending a couple worms down through. So let's go switch to worm and see what happens. Addicts, we fish these worms the same way. You've seen some, us do some videos on these before. I'll drop some links down below if you want to get more in depth on worm fishing. But it's the exact same setup. Fixed float, fluorocarbon, down to your jig head and your worm. We're gonna send this thing through and hope there's a, hope there's a little biter.
All right, addicts, I couldn't hook a fish, but hopefully I was able to get out here and teach you guys how to get out here and put this method to the test. The simple bobber and jig for steelhead or trout or even salmon is one of the most effective methods to catch these things. So go out there, get yourself a rod, get yourself a reel, or get yourself just a bunch of jigs and get out there and catch some fish. And thanks again so much for tuning in. If you guys are liking these videos, be sure to smash that thumbs up and we'll see you on the river. Thank you.